In the fall of 1964, the United States Air Force unveiled an aircraft unlike anything seen before. The XB-70 Valkyrie looked like it belonged in outer space. It was a massive bomber designed to cruise at supersonic speeds, outrun any enemy aircraft, and even ride its own shockwave for extra lift. This remarkable machine was supposed to be the future of America's bomber fleet, but its story is one of groundbreaking innovation overshadowed by tragedy and changing times. This is Invents KE, the channel where history meets technology. I am your host Jessa Remy Augustine, and today we're diving into how the Cold War fueled the development of this groundbreaking bomber, and know why only two were built. Stick around to find out more, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. By the mid-1950s, the Cold War had reached a boiling point. Both the United States and the Soviet Union had developed strategic bombers capable of delivering nuclear weapons deep into enemy territory. The US Air Force relied on the B-52 bomber that could carry heavy payloads. But there was a problem, the B-52 was too slow to evade the latest Soviet interceptors. The Air Force also had the B-58 Hustler, a supersonic bomber that could fly as fast as Soviet jets. However, its range and payload were limited, making it unsuitable for long missions. What the Air Force needed was a new type of aircraft. A heavy bomber that could fly faster and higher than any Soviet fighter or missile. In 1955, designing such an aircraft seemed nearly impossible. Radical ideas were considered, such as using nuclear power for extended range or exotic fuels to boost jet engine performance. But by the late 1950s, advancements in aerodynamics, jet engines, and materials made it possible to envision a bomber that could sustain supersonic speeds throughout its entire mission. Two major aircraft manufacturers, Boeing and North American Aviation, submitted designs. Both featured futuristic concepts, including delta wings and canards for improved stability during supersonic flight. Boeing, with its extensive experience building bombers like the BE-52, was widely expected to win the contract. However, North American's engineers discovered a game-changing principle known as compression lift. Compression lift occurs when shockwaves generated by an aircraft at supersonic speeds create additional lift, improving efficiency. North American incorporated this principle into their design, giving their bomber a significant advantage in fuel economy and performance. Surprising many, the Air Force selected North American's design in 1957. The new bomber was designated the XB-70 and named Valkyrie. It would weigh 260 tons, be powered by six afterburning turbojet engines, and reach speeds of Mach 3, that is three times the speed of sound. The first XB-70 prototype was unveiled in May 1964, but the program faced constant setbacks. In the world to ever take to the air. It has also been the heaviest airplane that has ever landed on one occasion. It is today the fastest big airplane. But just as the XB-70 was proving its capabilities, the world of military strategy was changing. Advanced Soviet missiles and the rise of intercontinental ballistic missiles, ICBMs, questioned the relevance of manned bombers like the Valkyrie. Ultimately, the program was scaled back to research purposes, with only two prototypes built. The Valkyrie's most capable prototype reached its peak performance in 1966, sustaining Mach 3 for over 30 minutes. But on June 8, 1966, during a formation photo flight, disaster struck. One of the accompanying planes collided with the XB-70, destroying both aircraft and claiming the lives of two pilots. This tragedy marked the effective end of the program. Let us know in the comments which technological marvel you'd like us to cover next, and subscribe to Invents KE for more fascinating tales where history and technology collide.